Hello and welcome to this English stream of Diary of a Common Man. My name is Salim Lalani. This week we are going to talk about something extremely disgusting that has happened uh, that I have become aware of. Uh, but before we talk about all that, uh, I need to give you an update on Prince Ali Khan Hospital. And we'll also continue with uh, what we started last week, the memoirs of Aga Khan. But first, uh, Prince Ali Khan update. As you know, Prince Ali Khan Hospital all of a sudden decided to close and uh, the employees are stranded. They, their futures are now un, 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 uh, insecure and uh, uh, unfortunately they are still in a lot of distress as we speak. It has been going on for months and their future is still not decided. The only thing that we have heard uh, recently is that those employees who have served Prince Ali Khan Hospital for last five years, at least five years employment, they will get six months pay. The rest of the people, we don't know what's going to happen <clears throat> and it's not looking good. So that is uh, the ethical AKDN at work. The um, next thing is uh, Sunday, new Sunday timing. Uh, if you have any friends or family uh, who basically join me on a weekly basis, please pass on the new Sunday timing for them. We have made it convenient for the American continent. Um, so uh, please uh, let them know. The other thing is um, uh, I met Wazir. If you remember Wazir, the guy who was... Uh, Ismaili Murid, the Rouhani child of uh, the Imam, was thrown out of the Jamaat Khana for taking a video, which he never took. Uh, so I was talking to Wazir the other day and he narrated an incident, which I think that is, is, uh, is, is a bit funny, but uh, let me tell you. Now remember, Wazir is not a very wealthy person at all. He is a very modest kind of an income and a very simple kind of a man. So uh, a childhood friend <clears throat> who happens to be a um, close friend of Wazir, an Ismaili, practicing Ismaili, he rings Wazir and says he is in financial difficulty and he wants Wazir to give him some money. And Wazir, the way I know him, uh, he would never say no to anyone even if he can't afford it. So he said, okay, come along. I'll give you the money. So they were talking <laughs> and Wazir said that, Matt, when you are in difficulty, when you need money, you call me. And in the Jamaat Khana, you give all the credit to Aga Khan. How does that work? <laughs> and you were amazed at this answer. You know what the guy said? He said, the reason why I give credit to Aga Khan is because he got into your mind and he told you that my friend is going to come and uh, you give him money. So Aga Khan got into Wazir's mind and he instructed Wazir to help this guy out. I'll leave it at that. All right, now we will uh, continue on with uh, the discussion that we were having about uh, Memoirs of Aga Khan, The Tale of Lies. If you read that book, I don't know how many of you have read Memoirs of Aga Khan, but when you read that book, you will get a few impressions immediately. One, he is a loyal British citizen. He is a white. 
he although his color was something different but he by heart by thoughts by mind by soul by spirit he was a white and more importantly than white he behaved like a non muslim that is what comes out from members of aga khan apart from the lies every almost every chapter you will find one lie or the other i spoke about a few lies last week i'm going to basically continue with a couple more today before we take questions and we have a couple of guests today we uh, who we will uh, entertain uh, after the questions so the first lie members of khan written by sultan mohammad shah if you haven't read it i highly recommend you read it ismailism has survived because it has always been fluid rigidity rigidity is contrary to our whole way of life and outlook rigidity in other words he is saying we are very flexible fluid he he uses the word fluid but in the same book this is what he says what has been my policy with my followers our religion is our religion you either believe it or you do not believe it you can leave a faith but you cannot if you do not accept its tenets remain within it and claim to reform it in other words you cannot question anything that happens in the jamaat khana you cannot question leave alone reforming it okay what kind of fluidity is that fluidity that denies a human being of a human right of free speech the right to ask a question what kind of fluidity is that okay let's move on to the second one what about political guidance it has always been the practice of my ancestors to which i have strictly adhered always to advise ismailis to be absolutely loyal and devoted subject of the state whatever its institution monarchical or republican of which they are citizens look who is talking loyal to a state sultan mamasha was born as an indian in karachi in british india he pretended to be an indian and then he became a spy of britain and he gave sensitive information about indian freedom struggle to the british yeah this is the man who is talking about loyalty okay then was he loyal to the british no he shook hands with hitler in 1942 right in the middle of second world war he said to hitler you tell me and i'll get 30000 muslims to fight for you and by that time he was a british citizen the man after about towards the end of his career towards 1955 when he writes this memoirs he has the audacity to say i advise my ch- spiritual children to remain loyal 
Okay, that's number two. Let's come to number three. He talks about uh, the proceeds. This time he talks about the proceeds of the Golden Jubilee. He said, we established an insurance company called Jubilee Insurance, whose shares have greatly increased in value. We also set up what we called an investment trust, which is really a vast association for receiving money and then putting it out on loan. Loan to who? Loan to Ismaili traders and to people who want to buy or build their own houses at low interest rate. Money is given to Ismailis and other people on low interest rate. Interest. Something that is haram in Islam. A Shia Imam takes interest. And then he says in the same book that as a Muslim, I have done this. And as a Muslim, I have done that. Yeah. Okay. And the last one for today. This time he's talking about the money, the wealth, how wealthy he is. It was recognized by each and every, uh, sorry, it was, it was globally recognized that Aga Khan is one of the richest men in the world. And it was no wonder. He displayed the wealth, didn't he? Being weighed in diamonds, being weighed in gold, his wife wearing a sari loaded with real diamonds. Moving around in, in, in royal circles, dining with the queen, he displayed the wealth. And now he's denying it in the memoirs of Aga Khan. This is what he says about my own personal wealth. A sorry, I lost the internet. This is what he says in the Quran. Uh, sorry, in the uh, members of Aga Khan. About my own personal wealth, a great deal of nonsense has been written. There must be hundreds of people in the United States with a larger capital wealth than mine. And the same is true of Europe. Perhaps not many people, in view of the incidence of taxation, even in the United States, have the control over an income that I exercise. But this control carries with it, as an unwritten law, the upkeep of various communal, social, and religious institution of my Ismaili following, and in the end, only a small fraction of it, if any, is left for the members of my family and myself. What a lie. Analyze this paragraph from the great memoirs. There must be hundreds of people in United States with a larger capital than mine. Are we talking about anybody else's wealth? We are talking about your wealth. We never said they have more or you have more. That's number one. Number two, he says, I, whatever wealth I have, it is spent in the upkeep of communal, social, and religious institutions. He is saying he spends, he spends for the murids. The reality is the murids give him the money. 
the reality is that murids give him the dasod. And here he says, I spend for their upkeep. And then he says, I spend for the upkeep of my family. He completely forgot Haji Bibi case. And he wants you and me reading the members to forget about Haji Bibi case. If you don't know what it was, very briefly, let me tell you what it was. Haji Bibi was a cousin of Sultan Mama Shah. And Sultan Mama Shah has stopped paying money to all the relatives. Haji Bibi questioned Sultan Mama Shah's actions. She challenged him that this money that you have is family money. She took him to court. This is famously called Haji Bibi case. He did not give money. And here he says, the money is for the upkeep of my family. And it is for the upkeep of the religious institutions of Ismaili following a liar. Liar called Sultan Muhammad Shah. That is all I have for this week in relation to members of Aga Khan. Next week, I'll bring you some more. But in the meanwhile, we'll take some questions. Uh, Zahid, please display the questions for me. In North America, Aga Khan introduced evening satara for extra money to be collected other than regular collections for seven days. Uh, Niaz Aga Khan bath water is served and I don't know what you're saying there. Evening Satara, I knew it is it is collected, but I don't know if there is a new Satara. So please clarify that, number one. Number two, you are saying Niaz Aga Khan's bath water is being served. I think you are misquoting uh, this, this bath water. Bath water was, it belonged to Sultan Mama Shah, this current Aga Khan. Okay. So in, in Sultan Mama Shah's time, the Jamaat, Jamaati leaders in Africa, they used to collect the bath water wherever he was staying and sell it as Niaz. This is a rumor. I don't know if it, if it was confirmed. But it, the current Aga Khan's bath water, I'm not very sure. If you have any evidence, please uh, let me know. Okay, next question. It seems this particular verse was for Aga Khan. Quran verse, uh, sorry, uh, Surah 22, Ayat number 13. He calls unto him, whose harm is nearer than his benefit. No doubt, what an evil mola, And no doubt, what an evil friend. Uh, your comment, uh, Mr. Observer, I am uh, I would rather refrain from making a comment on this ayat because I am not an expert on Quran. Uh, and as you know, Quran uh, is understood via different interpretations. And I have not been able to form any interpretation of my own. So unfortunately, I feel very unqualified to uh, make a comment on Quran. Next question. Inayat Ali says, when Imam Sultan Muhammad Shah talks about fluidity, about changing the Sharia, it means that the Aga Khan has a fluidity to, to change Sharia, not Ismaili, uh, not Ismaili the, uh, theology. Uh, in what context he talks about fluidity, we, we, we will never know. <laughs> he's, he's so fluid in the sense that he can say anything anytime. He can say in the memoirs, he can say something. To the royal circle, he can say something else. In the Muslims, he can say something else. To the freedom fighters, he can say something else. So in other words, he can, he is very fluid in that sense. Okay. 
whether theology is sharia or not we don't know okay next question interest is not haram usury is haram yes correct correct next aga khan is the only rich person aga khan is the only rich person in the world he his wealth can put elon musk jeff bezos warren buffett to uh, shame hundreds of jamaat khana in the whole world each valuing over 120 million do you, look i don't have any numbers i'm sorry uh, i don't I, i i have no numbers what i do know that he is a one of the richest okay what i do know that he must have a lot of wealth hidden hidden in the swiss banks hidden under different companies uh, which we call the uh, shell shell companies uh, so his, his wealth is unknown okay so i am not prepared to put a number to his wealth and hence i cannot compare to musk or bezo or anybody else okay but you are free to do that uh, you can you can Im- imagine whatever you want to okay next we will keep giving mola the son because mola has helped me out in difficult times and sent people to help me <laughs> yes he has sent a lot of people to help you all right next what is the condition of aga khan who is running everything if he is very sick uh yeah last i heard he was very very ill uh who is running everything look that is a very good question that one who is running the system i am now beginning to form an opinion and of course i could be completely wrong but there is a a thought in the ismaili circles that it was aga khan there is this current aga khan he hardly ran the system himself even when he was well he had subcontracted the system to a few people few powerful murids around him so so that he can enjoy his life and he can look after other interest in life that he has i have heard so much that even the farmans that are written are not written by him talikas are also written by his murids and sent to the murids but i don't have any evidence of that uh, so question is who is running the system it is very likely that either the subcontractors are running the system or prince rahim or the family is running the system uh, th- uh, we we will never know for sure okay next you say leaders are corrupt does does that include leaders of different boards doing voluntary or are they qualified and promote uh, on merit look who is uh, who is corrupt and who is not corrupt that we don't know but we have seen certain examples of leaders of real leaders and i have named them in the episodes so so it is more than likely that the leaders are getting the money and then there are different layers so the bottom one takes a percentage and then the top one may take certain percentage and then it is hands and then whatever the imam gets in the end is unknown okay so uh next question all right now all the questions have uh, finished 